Facebook is going to outlive Zuck, mm -hmm. right? Google's going to outlive Larry. Mm -hmm. And we want Honor to outlive us. Welcome to the Nuco Shift Dialogues, where we speak with leaders in business, government, and media, the people on the front lines of the greatest shift in business since the Industrial Revolution. With his new company, Honor, Valley entrepreneur Seth Sternberg is tackling one of society's most intractable problems, how to care for our increasingly elderly population. Honor matches in-home caregivers with seniors and their families using a proprietary platform that modernizes the home care experience and focuses on helping an aging generation live with dignity and human connection. Welcome, Seth. Thanks for having me, John. Appreciate thanks. it. Yeah, thanks for coming. Yeah, totally. So we're going to talk about your company. Okay. Um, Honor. So tell us how you came to launching this company. Uh, so I was working at Google. I sold my last company to Google. And uh, my friends and I kind of started thinking about what would the next problem be that we'd work on. And we had some criteria. Uh, the most important criteria was to be able to look a human in the eye and know that we were going to make their life fundamentally better. And why did that, why was that the number one criteria? Uh, you know, I think as a second time entrepreneur, you saw that you spend seven years on average on a company, and Mebo was seven years. Yeah. And you have to, and as an entrepreneur, you sell that company and the vision every day to investors, employees, the press. Right. So you better really care. Right. Um, and the only thing we all really cared about anymore is figuring out ways to help other people. Because, like, why else are we getting up in the morning? Why are we going to work? Uh, so it was by far the most important criteria. Yeah, all right, and there are um, two more. There are two more. It had to be what we believe to be an execution risk play, not a market risk play. So we wanted to know that it was very, very hard to build, but if we built it, there was clear demand and a clear problem, as opposed to, we could build it, but we don't know if people want it. Now that right? sounds like a lot of companies. We could build it, but we don't know. It is, like even the early Facebook or Twitter, right? Like. Right. Didn't know, right? You, not that hard to do V1, like V3, really hard, right? right? Once you have traffic, but V1, pretty easy, but you just don't know. Um, we, if you look at second time entrepreneurs, they tend to work on problems that are kind of known problems, but they're very hard to execute on because right. second time entrepreneurs have experience. So right. that's something you utilize. Uh, and then the third one is we had to believe that it could be a $100 billion market cap. Um, and our reason for it was it's actually easier to build that company. Right? Like you can get more resource, better people, more capital. And it's a measure of the size of the problem. Right. right? Like why work on a problem that can only be a billion dollar company? Like right. it's not as big a problem. Right. So tell me a little bit more about what Honor does. Yeah, so Honor is remaking a category called non-medical home care. So as we get older, uh, there are these things called activities of daily living, getting out of bed, getting dressed, getting food. Most of us do them all day, every day, hundreds of them. We take them for granted. But if you can't do one, two, or three of them, you can't live alone anymore. And as you get older, like you're going to want to live in your home. You probably want your parents, if they're still here, to live in their homes, and they probably want to live in their home. So how do you enable that, right? So you have to get someone to go into their home and help them. It turns out it's a $30 billion industry in America. It turns out there are 2.5 million paid care pros in America who help the elderly stay in their homes, but it's just a very, very broken industry. So 30 billion, so you're almost a third of the way to the 100 billion. Is the global market the 100 billion mark that you get to? Yeah, so 100 billion market cap, right? So yeah. you could probably, oh, okay, you could, you could yeah. probably, and you know, this is a classic case actually of a market where it is clear the demand is much larger than the current size of the market. Similar to Uber and taxis. Similar to Uber and taxis, because it yeah. is so broken. I mean, right. it's just so, dis just disastrously broken as an industry, that if you make it a great product for people, you will expand the size of the market. Right. So tell me a bit about how it's broken. Uh, you know, the biggest thing is your mom and my mom probably have different needs, right? So maybe my mom has dementia and cats in her home, and maybe your mom speaks a specific language, and maybe she's heavy. So that means they need really different care pros. And with 50,000 agencies across America, it means that the individual agency is very unlikely to have the right person to match the needs of your mom and the needs of my mom because it's so unique, right? It's right. so heterogeneous, right. the needs and then the capabilities. So that's kind of piece one that's broken. Piece two is that the care professionals who treat, you know, who go in and help our parents, they are treated really poorly, 
like they're they're treated just their wages are extraordinarily low. Fifty six percent are on government assistance programs. So they're working, doing elder care, but they're also on government assistance. They're on government assistance, yeah. and they're it, you know we have societally put them in a place where they can't really care for themselves. Right. And if you can't care for yourself, how how can you care for someone else? Right. right? And so we need to enable the care pros to be comfortable in their own lives, amazing at their jobs, so that they can then provide amazing care to our parents. So those are the two things that are broken. One is it's hard to find the right person for your mom because it's just so fragmented. Right. And the other is that person you find, we have to treat them well, not poorly. And the approach that you take in terms of the way you're you know, intentionally creating the company, mm -hmm. I, I, when I was studying it, it struck me there were a couple things that you're doing that feels similar to kind of a modern platform approach to a technology company. Mm -hmm. One is is that you you are yeah. aggregating a, a marketplace, a double-sided marketplace, yep. right? Yep. Um, and the other is that you're actually paying a living wage. You're, mm -hmm. you're, you're, these are full-time employees. They're mm -hmm. not contractors. Yep, which they're is a, W-2 employees. Yeah, W-2 right. employees. They can be part-time or full-time. Right, it's up but, to them. But they're W-2 yep. employees. That's right, yeah. Um, how did you come to, to that decision? Uh, so... As we looked at 1099 versus W-2, we actually started as contractor 1099, and there were some real limitations there. It's, these are artificial constructs, actually, right? It's, it's the way the law is structured. The biggest issue around 1099 is that we could not train the care pros. And while you see you know, there are 2.5 million care pros today in America, the elderly population will double in America in the next 15 to 20 years. We're going from 40 million to 80 million, wow. right? And we're going to need at least... 5 million care pros, except like I said, this market's actually probably much larger than we think it is. Yeah. We probably need 7 million care pros. Okay, we have actually already screened, we believe, 30% of all registered care pros in the SFA area, right? We're accepting 5% of people who apply. Well, then you've got a real problem. We've got a huge problem. <laughs> <laughs> 350,000 out of potential 7 million. Right, right? we've got a big problem. Yeah. It means that we need to create care pros. Yeah. Right, and to do that, you need to be yeah. able to train people. And really, training people is also about moving people up. Right? right, we've had people churn out of honor, but it's actually to go become RNs at a health system because we enabled them to get real world it's like experience. Upward churn. It's upward churn. Yeah. Right, it's the yeah. kind of churn you want. You're creating right. paths forward for people, which is, I think, something that we're missing in America in general right now. Yeah, is we, we have a whole population of people that we're doing yeah. a very bad job lifting up. Uh, so we need to do that. Right yeah. to enable folks to be yeah. amazing. Yeah. Now, when you mentioned that seven million uh, job number yeah. um, that we may need within twenty years, was it? Or yeah. yeah. Um, it made me think of another number, six million, which is roughly the number of drivers and truck drivers that yeah. are going to be put out of work according yeah. to all the projections yeah. because of autonomous cars and yes. trucks. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> but it strikes me that the jobs you're creating are jobs that probably never could be replaced by robots. Yeah, so it's a fascinating point you're making, and it's actually one I talked to someone about at lunch today, a yeah. mutual friend of ours. Um, so we're in a world where structurally some of the technology that we're creating is taking away millions of jobs. It will, right? But Honor actually very specifically is creating technology so that we can absorb those higher costs while we train people better, treat people better, pay people better, so that they're in a better place in their own lives, so that they then provide a better service, mm -hmm. which people will pay for, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And this is a service that is a human service. And the market, like, like we said, is going to double. And so we will absorb some number of truck drivers, right? right? And you know what? Some number of veterans. Right. And some number of people from the existing industry. But I actually see Honor as partially as a mechanism to be able to help folks who are being dislocated by technology Instead, we're using technology to create more, better jobs. Right. And I think that more industries need to figure that out. Yeah. And the, the core of it, it strikes me, is that what you're delivering at the point of care yeah. is human-to-human -human connection. That's exactly right. So, and it's important because, you know, our customers think of Honor as the care pro who walks across the threshold of their door and says, hello, I'm from Honor. Right. Right. Honor is not a technology company. Honor is not technology to our customers. It's the care pro. Right. And, you know, in a lot of Silicon Valley companies, the stars are the engineers. Right. But in Honor, our product, our stars, 
are the care pros. Right. And so we actually realized for even for interviewing, one of the most important things we have to look for in people that we bring into the company, period, is that they believe in enabling the care pros to be amazing. The technology our engineering team worked on, it's fundamentally to enable the care pros. Right. Because right? we enable them, then the customers get a great experience. When I think of elder care, I think of a lot of awful stories yeah. uh, about things that have gone wrong, yep. about neglect yep. and abuse even. Yep. Um, I imagine that given that you're already in three markets, you have to have run into some of that and you must have processes for yeah, it. Yeah, we do. Yep. You know, can you tell me the approach or how do you handle things like that? Yeah, it's, you know, we do see things sometimes that are really challenging, right? Uh, and it ranges from times when we do see what we think might be abuse mm -hmm. uh, to times when we do see, uh, you know, an elderly person that we're serving who is abusive, maybe no, through no fault of their own, they might, you know, have kind of some sure. advanced, you know, cognitive impairment. Um, and we have different processes depending on what that situation is. I think the important thing in all of this is we don't have great systems today, like as a society, to help get rid of the fraud and abuse and mistreatments on all sides right. of elder care. And that's a big part of what we're building. I'll give you a good example. Um, if someone, uh, if a care pro is consistently, let's say, late, right? or consistently writes short notes, or is consistently rated poorly. Now, we can't necessarily see, there's no cameras, right? We can't see if they stole something. There might be at some point. Though, there right? might be, well, but our customers actually don't want cameras, uh, right? right? So it's, yeah, you know, yeah, our yeah. care pros actually are okay with it. It's right. fascinating, we ask them, yeah. would you be okay with cameras? The answer is yes, yeah. right? But the customers don't want cameras right. because of privacy, yeah, of course. privacy concerns. Yeah. Um, but what's interesting is you might actually be able to correlate your way into, okay, like, this person is more likely to steal because of bad ratings in the system, mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. So finding correlations so that we can clean up the full of the system mm -hmm. is something that's actually possible, yeah. and that's pretty cool. Yeah. But it's very important to remember that at the same time, how are you protecting care pros in all this, yeah. right? Like, because I can't tell you the number of times that we get called by a customer, and they'll say, my mom told me that the care pro didn't come. And then we'll say, you know what, your mom might have advanced dementia. Like we know, we actually looked at the logs and we can tell you with 99.9% .9 certainty that care pro was there. And so it's as much about protecting care pros, right. which is super critical, yeah. as it is protecting customers. It's both sides. When you first you know, realized, oh my God, this might be a big idea that checks the three criteria, um, At what point did you realize that this was way harder than even you realized? Because this is one of the largest hairballs that we have in society, yeah. right? Yep. Is how do we take care of a generation and increasingly multiple generations of people who, um, you know, in the past there was a different approach. Elder care is a relatively new industry. Yep. It was not an industry a hundred years ago. Yep, right? that's right. Um, you know, it's funny. I, uh, I thought that the first time honor would have to deal with even something like death would be months and months and months, at, months mm -hmm. after we launched. Mm -hmm. And I was wrong. I think it happened within the first month that- So, so a care pro shows up and pro, the no, customer the care pro is was dead. In someone's home oh. when they naturally passed away. Oh my goodness. And you know, in, in home care, that happens. Right. And I didn't realize that that would happen in month one. <laughs> and it's kind of like, what do you do as a company, as a right. service? How do you help the family? Right. You don't have a protocol and, yet for that. Right. Yeah. And how do you help the care pro? Mm -hmm. Right. Because mm -hmm. they just That's live through that traumatic. too. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. somewhat traumatic. Yeah. Albeit, it turns out, great care pros usually have experience in dealing right. with death. And actually, they're usually really great at helping the family because the family yeah. usually doesn't yeah. have experience, but the care pro usually does. Yeah. You had an industry that has two and a half million caregivers. 50,000 kind of mom and pop shops. Yep. You told me on average about 40 employees yep. or 40 contractors yep. working yep. for each one of those. Yep. There was no data collection across that. Yeah, right? effectively it, it was effectively it's just spiral bound notebooks on kitchen right. tables. For it's the sort most of, part. you know, uh, pre internet in a way, right? Yep. The nodes were not connected. So yep. now you are seeing a, a network of connected nodes and you're seeing data that you. That, that, and you have the ability to leverage yep. uh, insights in a way that right. couldn't be done before. That's, right. That's fascinating. There, there are a number of those kinds of, of 
businesses that are being started, many of them have come and, and, and had a conversation here. It strikes me this is very similar to alt school. Yeah. Um, and, and you've also taken a vertically integrated sort of full stack approach to the business, That's right? right? Yep. Can you unpack what you mean by full stack approach? Yeah, so full stack, we looked at, full stack basically means we want to control the end-to-end -end experience. So we employ the, from we employ the care pros to it is our software that runs the entire system. Mm -hmm. We are the interface with the customer. So we kind of, our honor is the full of the experience that a customer and a care pro have mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. We looked actually at, hey, should we take the easy route? Should we just write software, right? Like, let's right. just do a little bit of technology. Our challenge with that is that we actually saw the industry is kind of so fundamentally structurally broken. We didn't believe we could simply hand technology to the industry. It's very similar it. to education. You can't just hand some technology to a public school and yep. expect it to work. I think that's right. It's yeah. a, because it's so, it, you know, we've talked to a bunch of folks who run pretty good home care companies. And then what we unpack as we talk to them is that there's, you know, Honors retention rate on care pros is almost always substantially better than theirs, right? Mm -hmm. You unpack how we manage care pros versus how they do it. And there's no one thing we do that that agency could kind of replicate and have much better retention rates. It's the totality of the system, mm -hmm. right? And that's why you really need to, I think, right. from scratch, create right. an amazing system. How many people uh, are in Honor now are, 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 as employees and, and you know, push it out three or five years, yeah. you yeah. know, wh where does that go? Yeah, uh, we're growing extraordinarily fast. Like to give you a sense, last week we were literally, we grew 10% week over week. The week before that was 5%. <laughs> I have actually never heard of a week over a week, week over <laughs> it, a Week over week, 10%, right? That's the amazing. The week before that was 5%, yeah. the week before that was 10%. Yeah, that's right? some compounding so, numbers. Yeah, it's crazy. I mean, yeah. yeah, we won't be able to maintain that for forever, right. but the growth is pretty staggering. Right. Uh, imagine the operations. <laughs> yes. Have, has being a purpose-driven company with a very big mission helped you recruit people who otherwise might work at the large tech companies in a comfortable job? Yep. Biggest benefit that I did not expect. So, you know, there were parts of doing uh, Honor that are much harder than I thought they would be. Right. But the part that was massively easier is we literally have people who email incessantly saying, and they're great people, mm. I really want to come to Honor, like is there a role that fits me? And it's, and it's that it has two properties. A totally mission driven company, right? Like absolutely driven to help the care pros right. and help the customers, both, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And it can be a massive company, right. right? And if you have those two things, then someone who spent their, you know, their whole life working on something that maybe they're not super passionate about, all of a sudden there's the opportunity to work on something for the same economic advantage right. that could change the world for the better. Yeah. And so we really, like one of the reasons why we wanted to work on something so big is if you sustainably change the world for the better, working on a problem that's that large, that is a company that out, will outlive you. Yeah. Like Facebook is going to outlive Zuck, mm -hmm. right? Google's going to outlive Larry. Mm -hmm. And we want Honor to outlive us. Yeah. That's a great goal. So thank awesome. you so much for coming by. Sam. Thank you for having me. Right really appreciate it. The Nuco Shift Dialogues are produced in partnership with the NASDAQ Entrepreneurial Center, connecting entrepreneurs from all walks of life.